Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we'll start a new mini-series on SMF. SMF is one of the fundamental subsystems of MVS or ZOS. It stands for Systems Management Facility. It was introduced in the 70s, I believe. And in fact, I've had some email exchanges uh, last year with one of the early authors, uh, programmers of uh, SMS, SMF. And SMF is a subsystem that permeates all of the operating system of MVS or ZOS. And what it does is it records. It, it's, it's a recorder of everything that happens within the operating system with an eye at recording uh, operating system activity as well as job performance uh, numbers. Uh, let's see if, if we can find any information on, on that. Let's do wiki SMF. Yes. Um, I don't think wiki has anything. Wiki SMF. ZOS. Uh, yeah, it does. So systems management facility or facilities. Um, as we said, this is a a subsystem that records everything that happens with the operating system when you start a job or when even uh, steps within a job every time you access the catalog kind of the directory or anytime you access a file every time you log in the operating system records whatever is happening in a data set now we can look at the data set if we go um, in this is ZOS that I have here but MBS would be similar if I go to the log viewer I can do the SMF and then we can scroll down and you will see the command answered by uh, the console and it says the the SMF data sets that it's recording are what is this one pieces man one and then it has two alternate data sets. So what it does is it records on this vSAM data sets and you can see the size here. And everything that's happening within the operating system, as I said, anytime a job is started, anytime a data set is created, anytime the catalog is accessed, anytime RACF does something, uh, the, the activity is being recorded here. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna get familiar with this a great deal more in this mini series. Because I think SMF, knowledge of SMF is important if you run a system that hosts real users, such as when we do TK4 MBS um, um, data uh, use, using hosting as I do with my cloud MBS instance, uh, or when you wanna measure performance of your jobs and or of your applications. So the way that SMF works is that on those data sets here that we just saw is that it has record types and those are not fixed block records those are variable friend variable length records which is one of the difficulties in dealing with this uh, with this data sets and then every record starts with a record type and there is many many different record types uh, some of them for instance, a well-known like the 30 record type is about job performance. Uh, RecF has the 80 record type. Uh, TB2 has 100, 100, 101, and 102. Kix has 110. Of course, we don't have Kix in MBS. And then there is the resource management facility, which is the it's the performance measurement facility within. MBS and ZOS, which is based on SMF, and that has records 70 through 79. Uh, and all those, every time that something happens within the operating system, SMF will write a record to these data sets, starting with the record number and then whatever the, the structure of that particular record type is. Some records have sub record types, that means they're split, but there's an overall record type and then the several types below it and uh, and and so everything that happens within the system is recorded this way 
Now, in MVS, SMF recording happens to be some data sets. Um, they usually call sys1.man123 or 012 or XYZ. And then there's another way to do it with, uh, with ZOS, which is to record it to log streams, which we're not going to look into here because it's not compatible. And then there's a bunch of uh, utility programs that are supplied with SMF by IBM that allows us to do stuff with SMF. Now there is in, in the ParmLib, or ParmLib as some like to call it, there is a member that controls the behavior of SMF. And SMF, by the way, can be turned on or off. So you don't have to have, have it running. Obviously, there's a very slight performance impact on the whole system, but it's so minimum, you really won't feel it. And, and the advantages of having SMF recording are so important that you, you really shouldn't turn it off, but you can turn it off. So let's go see, and you can also configure it. So let's go see how SMF is being managed. So, um, system here locate SMF and here it is so SMF PRM 00 we edit this one and so right off the bat well actually it's such a I like to browse it because I don't want to change it so let's go in browse mode so first of all here this one it says it's active and indeed it is active because we got an answer from SMF when we typed the display SMF in the console. It tells us what the data sets, data set names are, and those need to, to exist. Those are vSAM data sets. Do not prompt the operator. And then we tell what kind of records we're going to be recording. And, um, and so this is how, uh, how long it waits to write the records and and then um, some other less important uh, uh, parameters and then this parameter here says no type so this is the the, the types that uh, are the exit so an exit is one of the of the it's a IBM language what it means is that many of the its subsystems such as just 2 of course SMF even compilers TSO ISPF uh, almost every software written by IBM has an exit and what an exit is it's actually an API it's a hook that allows you to hook into it and change the behavior of that particular function so there is hundreds of exits within the operating system and uh, the user can uh, hook into those exit uh, exits and change the behavior of that particular function. So uh, SMF is one of those areas where actually users or installations have done extensive exit use. So because they've had it their own applications, their own ways to measure the system because it was important for them. Um, I can think of right now, maybe an airline wants to know what the response time is that terminal C or or I may want to know um, how many times a particular data set is accessed because it's, it's a very important data set I don't know anything that requires a changing of the normal behavior or enhancement of MBS and, and ZOS can be done through exits so and SMF does extensive use of those exits. So this is where you would just, if you wanted to turn it off, you just write no active, and then on the next IPL, it will not come on. There's obviously also another way to do it from the console, but not in MBS, that's a ZOS thing. And in, uh, in ZOS, to turn on or off, you will go to the console. I don't have access to the console in this system, but I can go to, to log and I would do um, set SMF if I do it this way so now it's recording and if I do it again then it will disable recording so this is a, a way to do it from the console but generally 
if you wanted to run it always runs it doesn't make any sense to stop and start it throughout an IPL the life of a of an IPL instance uh, you would either have it running always or always turn it off so uh, how do we work with this data sets so the way that it's meant to be the cycle is that MVS records everything to these data sets. When one is full, it switches over to the other one. When this one is full, it switches to the other one. This gives you time, in the meantime, to dump the contents to another file and empty the file. So when it switches, it finds an empty data set and it can continue to, to record. That's the way it's meant to be. It can be automated, obviously, with either ZOS automation or with outside tools by CA or BMC, etc. And we're going to be looking at how to do so that the cycle is first dump it onto a different data set. From there, then you can produce reports or whatever you need. And that's the cycle. And, and, and of course, empty them immediately after, after dumping them. So there's the recording, which is what's going on here right now. Then we dump, which is something that started by the system programmer or the operator. Or, but it, it's, it has to be done or maybe by schedule, but it's something that's done from the outside. And then once it's dumped onto an other data set, that there's, a, there's enough time to then go and do either daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, I don't know, um, uh, reporting out of those dump data sets. For instance, one of the reasons you may want to do that is to charge back to the users. So um, I know that, for instance, at the University of Leipzig, where I've been granted to log into the uh, to a ZOS system, they do chargeback, so I can go and uh, and from those dumps produce. Uh, I can see exactly who ran which jobs for how long, which resources were used, and then there may be a formula to calculate chargeback to the departments or the individual users. That would be one uh, one reason. Another uh, very important reason why SMF recording is left on by installations is that. As you may know, nowadays IBM charges for ZOS by peak usage. Uh, it's a rolling four hour window peak usage. And so SMF records constantly what the usage is of the system. And then the installation has to supply to IBM a monthly a report of what was the peak four hour window usage, which uh, IBM supplies a program for out of the dumps and then you send it to IBM and IBM will calculate how much you owe them that month for the usage of ZOS. You cannot buy a license for ZOS. You can only rent ZOS for peak usage in a four hour, in any four hour window. So that's another reason why we have SMF. And of course, it's for establishing um, which applications are using most resources, sometimes even performance management or even, um, I want to say, uh, uh, performance uh, tuning of applications and subsystems. So let's go see what the tools are to manage this process that I saw just described between recording, dumping and reporting. Let's start with the first one, which is the dumping. Uh, so let's get out of here. Here we go. I have here a couple of jobs I prepared. So obviously here SMF um, dumping, that's the first one, dump SMF records. Okay, so this, this job, what it does is it executes IFA SMFDP, which is the dump program. Let's close this so I have less distraction. And, and then we give it um, a name of the output, which I call Moshix SMF dump dot SMF dump, which it's a new one. So I allocate up to 190 cylinders, which is quite a bit. And I put it on this, on this uh, volume. And then the block size, which is important. First of all, it's record format is uh, variable record. So these are variable length records. Very important to understand that it's not fixed block because their H record type may have uh, different recording fields. And then here's the block size you need to have 27,998 and the logical record length 32,760, 32K. And then here is the sys into the program, the commands, 
which we call from date 2001 to date, I don't know, 234, 35. Let's do 240. I don't know what the date today is in Cardinals. And then, and then start and end. And then we say we input from this data set from whatever is running right now. And we output it to this file here. So we just want to go and check again which one is not being recorded right now. Although we can read from the data set that it's recording on, but I don't want to disturb it. So as the log. So yes, so right now it's recording on one. So we're going to do here sysman2. Oops, didn't copy right. So where is it? Okay. So now that we have this um, this job, and I will be putting this, by the way, in my GitHub. So uh, if you go to my GitHub, I will be putting it here in the Moshix slash MBS dataset um, the repository. I will put in the SMF uh, job here, the SMF dumping. So we will find it here. And there's going to be a link to this repository in the description below the video you're watching right now. And all of you should be familiar if you're, if you're serious about following some of the stuff we do on the Moshix mainframe channel, uh, you should have this repository copied on your system because there's a lot of things that I keep referring to and a lot of utilities that are very important for running MVS. And um, and by the way, always welcome comments or questions in the comment section below this video. Just if you have any question or any comment, just, just post them. I will read each one of those comments and reply to each and every one. So uh, this you will find here. And you know, I can just, I can just, uh, I'll put it, I'll put it, you find it in here. So now that we have this, let's launch it and see what happens. So that's job 6399. Oh, there's an SMF, there's a JCL letter. And so we we'll go here. What happened? Where's 99? So what's the problem? In data set not found. Oh, yeah. So it didn't find. Let's try like this. Uh, job 6400. That went well. Thanks for return code zero, 00. And let's go see. Okay, so here is the output from the job. This was very fast, two hundredths of a second. Um, so it created the dataset moshix.smf dump, which we're going to look at in a second. And then it says the number of records it processed, so 10,664 records. So you can see those sometimes um, very, very uh, big number of records in those uh, data sets and it tells us the record type so you can see that you found this is performance related and 80 we know is is recf related and 118 is probably kicks or some other subsystem i don't remember maybe uh, web sphere and many other records. I did. I don't have any S exits enabled here in this SMF, so everything is IBM supplied. Job SMF uh, record type 99 is the most common one. Let's go see what SMF type 99 is. IBM SMF type 99. 
Okay, SMF9 provides detailed audit information for work run on ZOS. You can use it as a performance characteristic of work. The records contains performance data for each service class, a trace of SM SRM actions, the data SMF will provide. So it's, it's basically everything that happens, it records here. It's audit as well as for, rec for performance reasons. You should write SMF records only when you want this detailed information. For general reporting and tuning information, you can use 70, 72. Yeah, which we actually don't have enabled, so it makes sense. It uses 99, but not 72. So this is very detailed recording according to this, and we have 10,000 records here. Average record length is 1,068 bytes. So you can see those records are actually quite big. Minimal record length is um, 94. Let's see here what else it tells us. And so it tells us how many records we wrote to moshix.smf dump. Now let's go look at it. Here it is. And this is all binary data. And so yeah, it wrote 14 cylinders. Of information so about 11,000 records is about 14 cylinders 14 megabytes so that's um, that's how we dump and now out of dump we can start processing information so let's close this window let's close this one also okay so this is the program to dump oh what just happened here okay so now we have Let's see here what I did. So here is another program called Ice Tool. Now Ice Tool is a report writer, an IBM report writer supplied by IBM, which allows us to um, to re produce a report now out of Moshix SMF dump. So you can, as you can see here, you can have headers and you can provide information, but you need to know the format of each individual rec SMF record type to write report uh, reports with this. That's why a lot of installations that buy tools by either CA, Computer Associates, which was recently acquired by, I think, uh, Broadcom or BMC, where it's much more user-friendly, or sometimes even you, there's a panel, TSO panel, which you, where you can go and just select the record type and, and the headers and the pre-formats a lot of the fields for you, and you can run your own report. So, but this is how you would do it. So this is um, the ICE tool. We write, of course, um, how we want this to be treated and um, we need to have a sort data set where you can do its um, sorting. And then the we say from, we take it from here, from Moshik SMF dump, using uh, virtual, I don't remember anymore what LSH stands for. If you do, please put, uh, write a small comment in the comments below this video. And, um, and then we write a report. So let's try to run this. 6401 and that went well so um, here is a very very simple report that I created um, there it is yep. So this records on type 30 and it's just a system ID. Now you may have seen some of our systems programming videos in this channel where I sometimes need to find out the system ID of the system we're running on. You can get it from the Nucleus and many, many people actually rely so much on SMF that they ask SMF to give them this data because it's also reported here. So SMF, sometimes it's even easier to extract information than from the nucleus, but this assumes that SMF is always running and if it may not be running. I mean, I think in most cases it is, but you can't rely that it is always. So 
uh, this is the system. And now, if we wanted to find out more about what fields there are in field type, so let's go IBM SMF record type 30 fields. We could go and extract more information. So we could go here now and add one more field and call it header. I don't know exactly what it is I'm looking at. That's why sometimes Rex is easier for these things. So let's get another field. Let's just do a search exit program as two and then say SMF type 30 and maybe we'll see some example. Oh yeah, so let's try this. So we have to add a minus here, a continuation. And well, why not? And then what is this? Okay, so let's see what happens if we run this. 6402, that went well. Let's see what it finds. So uh, none, of, none of the user IDs in that particular dump. So obviously you don't always find information one because you would have to go through all the SMF um, reports generated and dump all of those and then you will be able to extract. But this gives you a good understanding of um, of what it is. Let's maybe put also this record here so then we know. Okay, let's put in here. Okay. Save. And again, ice tool is a this is not strictly SMF, this is a report writer that exists within MBS. So let's go check this one out. Where is the SMF? Yeah, here is you have the SMF type, which is a record 30. So, yeah, so we don't have right now anything in those days, but if there was any activity, this is not a very active system. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, there's, by the way, I've seen this before. There's a ice tool mini user guide. It's part of DF sort. And so you should probably get familiar with this. So it's ice tool mini user guide. I, I had printed it at one point and read it on a long flight across the pond. Um, this very, it's a very good um, you, in a tutorial. So ice tool is a versatile DF sort that allows you to perform multiple versions in one or more data sets in a single job step. So it's very, actually very uh, advanced. Yeah, we already saw that, but let's find more um, 30 or maybe we can have something that does 99 since we have so many records okay the F sword tricks yes I mean the F sword is such an vast and and advanced programming it's almost like a programming language and there is a guy at IBM his name is Kulosu you have sort if you search by that. Well, I don't know, but in the IBM mail, mail, mailing list, he always comes up. He's he's a wizard with the ice tool. So let's see if we have an example type thirty ninety nine. A 
also have type and if we put it like this yes um, type not this one so maybe there's something here yep yes so we have something which reports on 99 and by the way 99 is the workload management intervention so every time workload management decides to do something will uh, you get this kind of okay so let's try this uh, maybe we create a new yeah so let's do um, what was this ice 99 so I do two Do I have job macro card? Yes. I just had in, in Moshik's mainframe channel video M81. I saw I showed how to have uh, ICPF macros that automatically create the job card. So this we have here. And then uh, let's use all of this. spending too much time in ZDM lately. Okay, so, and then we take this and we say, first this part, Let's also put this one's in. And let's see what this report does. Let's indent this properly. Okay, done. So let's see what comes out of this. 6404. Oh, condition code 12. There's some incompatibility. Pretty sure. error keyword or delimiter hmm. at this perk you didn't like this place here perk so let's go see oh yeah <laughs> why is that oh that's a zero yeah the zeros is in fact when i learned to program the mainframe I was forced by my bosses, I was in the military back then, to write the zero always with a strike through so that you could keep it apart from an O, which is still a problem today. Many people sometimes, many people do mistakes all the time when they mistake a zero for an O, and so striking it uh, makes it easy to keep it apart. Although the problem introduced by that is, is that in some places, the O is strike through and the zero is not, whereas in some others the zero is strike through, which is the way I usually do it, and the O is not. But this is what caused the problem here. So I should have spotted that. 6405, and that went well. So now, cancel this one. And let's look at the report. Oh. Well, so this is, there's too much information here. So let's make it a little easier to read. We don't need the Sysplex name. We don't need the SID. And let's run it again like this. So 
on this too. Still a lot of information, but it's a little bit better. So here it tells us dispatch priorities, etc. So this is um, that we what we extracted from type 99, which is workload management. And we can see here that um, what happened. So you can extract all kinds of information like that. And uh, you can also do it in Rex, obviously, and quite a few people do it in Rex because it's a little easier and you can, with Rex, you could also act on the data fields. You can multiply them, normalize them, which you can do to some extent with DF sort, but it's much, much easier with Rex because you have a full programming language with it. But this shows you how you produce reports out of the SMF dumps. Obviously, you would like, you know, if it's really important, if you're in production, you want a non-interrupted uh, dump so that you have all the dumps that you need to process without any gaps in it. That's very, very important. So the with with SMF, the deal, the 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 workflow is really important. So you want to have a workflow that is consistent, doesn't leave anything out, and then you can start to produce reports uh, of all kind of information. So this would be about why workload management takes certain decisions before we saw performance reporting you could have one of my favorite ones is catalog so uh, smf type catalog access nice tool let's see what it comes out with i think catalog if i'm not mistaken 65 Let's see, SMF record types catalog. So let's see if we can find a catalog. Yep, yeah. here it is, record type 36, there may be more. Yeah, defined, so you can say entry defined, facility, entry deleted. So you could have here, for instance, a report. Yeah, 65, that's what I thought. So, and, and 69. So um, you could have a report any time that something was deleted. So let's see if we can produce that. Do we have 65 at all in the input? Let's go check it out. So, I think it was this one. So, no, we don't have any 65 records. We have 60 and 61. Let's find out what 61 is. Define, so a data set was defined and 60 is a vSAM data set updated. So we could have 60, so let's maybe you do a 60. So uh, ice tool, exit program, ice tool, SMF type 60. Let's see what it comes out with. Yeah, we would have to go study the record. I mean, we could do it, but we'd have to study the record structure for record 60 and then produce our own report. It's not hard, but uh, you get the idea how to do this. I mean, we don't have to pre-chew everything for everybody. In fact, discovering things on your own is one way to learn it. And let's see if we have 61. Uh, exec. SF type 61. Hmm, what is this? Okay. There's something here, but I 
The way Kellogg requires a backup of the Kellogg Hagen using X Y for recording it requires SMF are being collected. Yeah, this is more about backup, not about reporting on it. But anyway, you get the idea that anything that happens in the system, uh, for instance, uh, one great thing that you could do is see who has deleted data. Because if you if you think that somebody has entered your system, hacked into your system, they probably need to delete some data to retrace the steps. So this will be recorded. And once it's recorded, it can't really be deleted that easily. So you would catch it if you produce all the deletions from uh, of data sets from the catalog, which I think, I think is 65, record type 65, you produce a report on that and you see exactly what was deleted and, and when and by whom. So this is the way to deal with um, six with SNF. In, in the next um, video in this mini series, we're gonna write a full, a full um, reporting facility. And maybe we'll pick up on this catalog thing and, um, and I'll write in Rex a full uh, catalog activity reporting tool to uh, record what happened in the system. So this is going to be in the next installment of this mini series on SMF. What you want to take away from, from this video is that SMF is integral, in fact, underlies all of MBS in whatever happens in the system, whatever happens with jobs that are being started is being recorded. You um, that That's always ongoing. You're expected to dump this into collection data sets from which you can then uh, write reports with iStool as I did or with Rex or your own assembly programs or well, I guess COBOL would be a good way to write a report and that's the way to do it. Um, we saw how those fields uh, are described. If you look at what we have here, you need to know exactly the position of the data in each field and what is the structure of that field and then, and then you can report in that field. Uh, that's the way to do it. You can look up in the IBM manuals what the description is and the structure of each record type and from there you can easily produce a report. There's really no magic in it. I will be putting this, the reporting tool, as well as the dumping job into GitHub so you can have access to it. And, and, um, and this is it for today. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below this video. If you have any remarks, any improvements, also please post anytime in the comments below this video. I read each one of the, of the comments and I usually answer each one of them. And uh, for any other um, questions you also have on our Discord channel, which is linked in the description below this video. And if you like this particular video, do press on the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to the Moshex mainframe channel yet, I would urge you to do so now. Thank you very much and goodbye.